Hello, it's Denise. I just wanted to talk about uh, lupus and the medications and, and what I do to keep my mind off the pain. I color. Uh, that's why I have this uh, camera on here. As if you've been following my uh, YouTubes, I was diagnosed with lupus in 2004 at 38 or I mean at 40, and I stopped working in 2003, and my whole journey started in the 90s with uh, health problems, and I now, you know, was homebound since, since 2004, but I've been in a wheelchair since 2011. I was put on different medications for lupus to slow down my immune system. And in 2004, I ended up being on 17 medications. And I was on some that I ended up having to get off because they didn't work for me. And I'm finding, you know, everybody's different. We can't compare ourselves with each other, even if we have the same illnesses. I was on antripoline, and that gave me hallucinations, and I was seeing things and hearing things, and, and nortripoline did the same thing. I was on one, and that didn't work, and then I got on the other, and the same thing happened. And uh, the first medication I was on was Plaquenil. Now, that's I'm still on, and I've been getting my eyes checked yearly as they tell you, because it could affect your ear, your eyes, <laughs> say my ears. I get words mixed up sometimes. Um, I also was put on methotrexate, and I was on that for eight years until I found out I had liver disease. And so then they took me off the methotrexate in 2016. I was also on cell sept for a while and it just got to be so expensive and it wasn't doing anything so I wasn't on it for very long I was put on gabapatin and I believe I shared this in one of the videos I it gave me seizures and or maybe I didn't share it yet but it gave me seizures and I had many strokes for about five years, and I was on that medication for eight years, on 1,800 milligrams. And finally, my room, or my neurologist said, let's take you off this and see what happens, because they couldn't figure out why I was getting the seizures in the many strokes, and I was in the ER for, shoot, a couple times a month for five years. And they kept saying it was the lupus. And finally, this doctor took me off it, and I haven't had a seizure or a mini stroke since. And that's been since 2012, I believe. So that's a blessing. Um, I find I feel like I am a guinea pig, just trying meds, not knowing if they work. It's like, you know, and I finally got to the point when they took me off methotrexate. I don't feel, well, yes, I, I guess you could say the pain got worse. But I don't know. My hair, I'm still losing the hair when I was on it or off it. It's the, my blood tests are the same when I'm on it or off it. And I was on methotrexate for eight years, and I feel like, well, all it did was give me liver disease. So I, and then they took me off it because of that, and then I changed continued to change my eating and lose all the weight, a lot of weight, not all the weight, but, and now they can't, they don't see the liver disease, the fatty liver they say I don't have, and the NASH, they don't see any signs of it, so that's a good thing, and I shared that, I think, with you guys on one of the videos. My memory is not the best, so please be, bear with me, but I believe it's important to share what this disease is truly about and not come on when it's just a good day and act really positive and good. I want you to know that, yes, you can have good days, but I also want you to know that but you can have bad days. 
and people can die of this disease, and people can live a long time with this disease. It all depends on you, your experience, and if it runs in the family or not. They can't tell you why you have it. There's no cure. I don't want to make it sound like a death sentence, but I also don't want to sugarcoat it and make it sound like, you know, nothing, like it's not a serious disease that it's okay. Because it can hurt us. It can take our lives. If if we become our own advocate, it makes it better. Because I, well, talking for myself, I don't trust doctors. I don't trust, uh, I don't like taking all these medicines, but sometimes I have to in order to live. I was on 17, I was put on 17 medications in 04, not all at one time, but by, by 05 I was on 17 medications. Now I'm on six, and then I have one, I believe, that it's only once in a while, the prednisone. I only take it when I'm flaring to the point where I can't stand it, because prednisone... I gained over 100 pounds on it, and my sugar went way up, and then was diagnosed with diabetes and osteo, what do you call it, per, osteoporosis, or whatever you call it, and now they said I don't have that either, so I don't know, but, but anyway, um, what I want to share is that some medicines do help, and some medicine I had to come to the point where is it worth it? Sometimes the side effects of the medicine make you sicker than the disease itself. And sometimes the side effects of the medicine can hurt your other organs just as much as or worse than the disease itself. So that's what I had to come down to the point I think it's not worth it for me to take some of those like methotrexate. So I'm not right now. I don't know what the future is going to hold, but right now I'm only on one for the lupus, one medication for the lupus, and so far, you know, I'm alive, and I make my days the best I can. I'm, like I said, I'm homebound, so I try to, to be online and share with others to help spread the message that we can make a good life for ourselves living with lupus, but it but also to share the reality of the disease. And the reality of the disease is pretty scary because SLA lupus can affect every organ. It's taken, it's affected my gallbladder was taken out even before I knew I had it in the 90s. And I had a hysterectomy, total hysterectomy. My hair is thinning. I used to have real thick hair. It's very thin, and sometimes I get spots, bald spots, and then it grows back, and then it disappears again. It goes back and forth. I'm photosensitive. I have to really be careful with the light. I think I shared that in another video also. I feel that it's really important to try to keep a positive attitude, but when it's the bad day, it's important to to have somebody that you could talk to and get it out. Don't hold it in. Sometimes if we hold things in, it just destroys us in the from the inside out, and that's what the disease is doing, so we don't need to do that too. So it's good to have either a friend or a doctor, well, a doctor you can talk to, but a friend, a close friend that you can talk to. And, and even cry on their shoulder. It's it's good to do that. And writing helps me. I, I uh, get my anger out with writing a lot. And talking like this on video helps me. Sometimes I just talk and then erase the tape and not put it. If I'm angry or something, just say it all out and get it all out. Or write it all out, you know, and then read it. Or read it to somebody. And then that helps me. And coloring like this helps me. Crossword puzzles online. I do most of those games online because of my hands don't work well. And do exercises with the mind, the memory. In eating healthy, of course. Eating healthy and 
staying away from the foods that can trigger the disease, like junk food, all my favorite foods, <laughs> all the holiday foods that's coming up. You know, I mean, I'm human. I eat those foods sometimes. I don't stay away from 100%. You know, some of those foods I don't even notice that they bother me, and some of them do, you know, and even some of the healthy foods bother me, so it's hard for me to tell sometimes. But I know that I, since I've lost the weight, I feel better mentally. The pain is, I haven't noticed any difference, but I have noticed a difference with my stomach pain. I feel doesn't hurt hardly at all. But all the arthritis and joint pain and muscle pain, I haven't noticed a difference. And that's just my experience. I know some people have gone on these different diets. I just call it eating healthy. And my doctor, I think I shared this too in one of the videos, my doctor suggested the Skinny Liver book, which I've been following for over two years. And, well, they say I don't have liver disease, so I guess that shows it, you know. But it doesn't mean I won't, uh, that I don't have it. I mean, I have to be careful. I still have to continue eating healthy and getting to a healthy weight, which I still have more to lose. But that's what happens when you have a lot of weight. It just takes a while. I'm thankful that I have lost what I have, considering I don't exercise and I'm always in a chair or a recliner or a wheelchair because of my uh, walking ability is not the same. I could only walk a few steps and stand not even just like 60 seconds. So, you know, my whole life has changed. I've learned to be okay with it most of the time. I still have those times where I cry and I don't like it and I get angry. And people around me, some of them, they, they feel sorry for me. And I don't want people to feel sorry for me. I just want somebody to just, I know you can't understand unless you live it. But it's like, if they see me happy, then they think, oh, you're all better. Or, you know, I'm happy a lot because I choose to be, not because my life, because I'm not in pain or because all of a sudden I'm healed. It's because I choose to be happy because I get so tired of being miserable. My life was full of misery when I had my health. Uh, it was full of abuse and chaos. So now it's like, yeah, my health isn't good in... And that's the chaos I have. But, you know, I enjoy just being. I enjoy talking here on YouTube. I enjoy laughing. I enjoy watching TV. I enjoy my husband. I enjoy my dog. Just the simple things. People say, well, how do you deal with just sitting in the house most of the time? I don't know. I just do it. I just thank God that I have a, a warm place to live and food in my stomach. Um, an air conditioning, a heater, you know, all the, the things that we need. Yeah, there's things I wish I had that I can't afford and those kind of things. But, you know, we have a choice. We can be happy with what we have or we can be miserable and we'll always want more. That's been my experience when I'm miserable. I'm never satisfied, so I have to be okay in this very moment. Okay with my hand burning holding the phone. <laughs> okay no matter what. Okay, when my skin hurts so bad like a sunburn, you can't touch me. I just, I, I'm not always okay, but I have to learn to be okay because I have a choice. I used to want to kill myself and hurt myself and destroy myself, and now I have a body that's destroying me, but I have a mind that loves me and wants to live. So I read things that uplift me. I watch things on TV that are uplifting or funny. I like to laugh. I like to play with my dog, put him on my lap, you know. Yes, I miss the dancing and the singing and some of the things I used to do. Of course I do, but I do it here in my chair. I sing in my chair. I watch music on TV and move my body like I'm dancing in my chair. So I can't do it the way I want to do it. And I already cried over that for long enough. So I don't have to do that. I could just be, okay, God, this is the situation that I'm in. What do you want me to do to enjoy my life? What do you want me to do to be able to 
put a smile on someone else's face. So I thought I'd come online and show you this coloring that I've done that I started over a year ago and haven't finished. <laughs> but that's okay. So, I don't know. I'm just grateful to be alive. I'm grateful I could share my story if it helps somebody. Or if you just think, wow, I'm glad that I'm not in a wheelchair. I'm glad that I'm not going through that. And that'll make you grateful. That's good. I figure whatever your life is, you have to try to enjoy it. And I find that when I change my negative thinking to positive thinking, I do a lot better. Someone said, well, how, how do you, did you deal with, you know, you were adopted into a family that was abusive? How did you deal with that? Well, it was normal to me. I didn't know anything different. And then when I got older and I realized that's not normal, that that's not good. And then I had some crazy thoughts in my head that I ended up acting on and then I started drinking and then I started creating more chaos and abuse in my life and getting involved with men that would hurt me because I hated who I was. It was all normal to me until I got sober and saw that it's not normal. And then how do I deal with it? I prayed and asked God to help me. I screamed and yelled but but he did help me. You know? <laughs> I'm just being honest, you know, I'm not a saint, I never was, and I never will be. I just want to live in peace today. I guess it's when you've been to the end of the earth, so-called, the down in the dumps, in the gutter, homeless, and all that. You know, living the way I am now is like a castle. I have a roof over my head, I have... A loving husband. I have a loving dog. I have people in my life who love me because I got rid of all the people that hated me. When I say that, I just let go of them because I got tired of chaos. People say, "Well, what do you? How do you deal with that?" I don't know. I just I had to tell. I had to let them go. I had to let the people in my life that abused me go. That's all. Yeah, I wonder about them. I wish it didn't happen. I wish I could love them. I wish they could love me. But it's it's the past. So I just give the love that I feel that I should have gotten back then to myself now. I talk to myself as if I'm my own best friend sometimes. Like with this illness. Oh, my hands there. My numb. And I put my hand under there. Um, well, like with this illness, I get angry at it, you know, it's making me tired all the time and I'm sleeping or I'm not sleeping because I'm hurting or I'm always tired, but I can't always sleep. Or if I do sleep, sometimes I'll sleep for 12 hours or sometimes I sleep for 30 minutes. It's you just can't plan sometimes. You can't say, OK, I'm going to do this and follow your schedule. Yeah, it's like. The schedule changes all the time. I have to write things in pencil because I have always have to erase things and change things around, you know. But that's okay, you know. I mean, as I figure as long as I'm here on this earth, I, I'm here to do the best I can with what I have and treat people with respect. And hopefully people will respect me back. You know, they, not everybody does, but, you know, that's just life, you know. Learning, I've learned that I, I am, I can choose to be my own best friend or my worst enemy. And I've been both, and I choose today to be my best friend. And that's really about, really about it. I just felt I needed to say what I've said. I don't know if it made sense. I, I just hope that anybody that's listening can maybe try to make your day the best day because today is a gift. It's your gift. I think I think of it like God. So like I said in one of the other videos from a minister, it's not my words. God so loved the world that he gave the world you. That sounds really special, doesn't it? It does to me. 
you can't hurt to think of yourself as being special, especially when we live in pain so much. It's like we're special enough to take a nice warm shower or a bath or, you know, have a nice massage or watch a nice TV show or color a pretty page or we're special enough to, you know, give give a hug to somebody. Think of yourself as the gift that you are, that God made you. I mean, it's better off than the way I used to think of myself, as you know what. And everything negative under the sun and every cuss word there was. So, you know, my life is a lot better now. Thanks for letting me share.